Hey YouTube, it is the day before Christmas Eve from the music. Old air compressor here has always been a little tired. So, um, got this one. This is a uh, BX2150. It's a, uh, um, it is a uh, Bendix 2150. Single cylinder, I was hoping for dual, but it is single. Um, already set up, ready to go. Um, the old compressor is a Midland EL850. So you can see it's a smaller one. That's a 8.5 CFM compressor. The new one's 9.5, so it's gonna be a little bigger. Unfortunately, while I was trying to change it out last weekend, I chipped my pulley here. And luckily we can see the part number on the side, 181-0776-C1, Charlie 1. So, nice guy on the forums had one. There's our part number, 181-0776-C1. The exact uh, pulley. So we're just going to pull the old compressor off real quick and uh, put the new one on. To pull it off, um, as you've seen from my water pump videos, you've got four bolts, one here, one here, one here, and one right here. We're gonna undo these. And then this is our belt tensioner. We'll slide this, we'll screw it, um, we will unscrew it which will push this further back and slide the compressor in. And then once we do that, I can take the uh, platform off. And uh, let's see, we got one bolt here, one bolt here. And then the top bolt, the other bolts, these bolts right here have to uh, be undone with the platform off. So we're gonna go ahead and take it off. Um, we're fighting the weather, it is gonna rain here soon. So I wanna get this done quickly. So more to come in a bit. Okay, I got the compressor off and this gasket still looks good. So what I'm gonna do real quick is we're gonna bolt the new compressor on. I've already got the fittings transferred. We got air, water, water, and then we'll put the uh, governor on here and we'll put our intake on over here once we get it mounted. So kind of fighting storms right now, so more to come. All right, the new compressor's on and as you can see, it lines up perfectly with that groove there. Um, I got oil hooked up here and down here, um, so I just got to get the water lines cut real quick. We're going to adjust them for size, and uh, and then we got to get air hooked back up, which will be interesting. Yeah, I need to turn that just a little bit to get it to rotate where it needs to be. But yeah, we're making progress. We're almost there, so more to come in a bit. All right, YouTube, it's another day, another week, and there's our new compressor. And this compressor, we actually had some issues with it. If you notice back here, it's super oily. And that is because if you look down here below, this is the crankshaft bearing cover. There was a hairline crack in there. So this thing has been dropped once. And that is JB Weld Putty, and it works great. Works freaking phenomenal. But um, as you guys know, when I mentioned uh, earlier in this video that the, uh, uh, or the last video, if I'm making this a two-parter, I'm not sure. Um, I mentioned that I wanted a, a two-flow, a two-cylinder air brake compressor. So I had a core, went down to the junkyard, and uh, got this guy. This is a TF550, it's a two-flow. It's a fairly recently rebuilt two-flow, remanufactured. So it looks just, uh, it's, so the newer two flows have, uh, or the remands have uh, dot matrix printing on them like that. And uh, old 271, the stupid Max Force that Kyle bought over there has the same lettering on its two flow. So I'm not stealing a Max Force 7 two flow just because I don't know what the oil's like going through them. But the way these work, um, International never, stepped away from these platform compressors on the uh on the v8 diesels like the max 47 triple four and so on um, like they did the dts on newer dts the timing case cover which is right down here uh, we can go to kyle's bus real quick his uh his 466 e because this is a 2000 model so we'll just open the hood real quick but on his bus um 
I think this is also a two flow 550. I can't tell because there's no thing on it, but yes, that looks like a two flow 550. Anyway, if you notice, there's no pulley on it. It's gear driven. So this is the gear case of the DT-466. And when they went to the 466E and also the P-pumped uh, DT-466, the NGD DT-466 in, in the mid 90s, uh, they did away with the belt drive for the compressor and made it gear drive, which is cool. Um, but they never did that on the V8 diesels. So uh, they've all, the international V8s, the seven, the triple four, seven, three, the uh, 6 VT365 and the Max 47 all had a belt-driven compressor. So, um, so yeah. Just button this up real quick. I'll pause it for a second. All right, back to our new compressor. So I moved the outlet over here, and if you notice, it's coming up at about a 45-degree angle, and that is because uh, this guy comes up at about a 45-degree angle. And I can't bend him anymore. It's copper. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo this guy again and change him out. Um, there's a couple things I need to do. So when I had this off the last time, I accidentally cracked our unloader valve hose right here. So I need to fix that. That's real easy to fix. So I'm going to fix that um, on the governor. I'm going to change this guy because he leaks. This is a low pressure switch. That's also a low pressure switch. And I can honestly just pull this guy off and plug the hole since I have another governor over here. And then, yeah, um, the rest of this should be pretty easy. There's our uh, intake right there, which will come over here to this side now. We've got coolant right here and coolant right here. So, so we're going to do... Uh, so I, I do have to tighten my coolant line connectors down, and then, yeah, we should be good to go. So more talk and less work. All right, I just got the platform out. As you can see, these holes right here go for the, the tensioners, and these four holes here are your uh, mounting brackets. So there's our bolts. Notice these thin head ones here. They go uh, right in these inset ones in the front. Okay, so got that. I've cleaned it all off. I pulled this off uh, this time with the puller, three jaw puller. So now installation is in reverse. We've got somewhere up here or over here, maybe it's over here. I've got a new uh, base gasket and this is all ready to go. I just need to put the uh, pulley back on and then we'll go from there. More to come. Uh, can't film it because this guy is really heavy. Hey YouTube, all right. Sorry, I've been kind of on hiatus. Uh, it's been a few months since I shot the video uh, where I went to go put this guy on. That was uh, New Year's Eve, and now it is mid-March, Ides of March. <clears throat> um, okay, so ever since I put this compressor on, it has been a dream. So the old compressor, this bus, first off, it leaks air down overnight when it gets cold outside in the winter time. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not sure what's leaking. It's, you know, it's old. It doesn't fail the air brake leakage test. So that's the important part. But anyway, um, it used to take the old compressor at least three or four minutes to air the tanks from zero to 150 at high idle um, or 130 excuse me not 150 um, this governor cuts off at 130 and I kept the original governor this is the governor it was on the donor bus originally because it tops off at 130 as opposed to 120 uh, but now if I high idle it it takes about a minute and I'm full from zero so, um, a few things I had to replace. That is the oil drain line down here. It goes from the bottom of the, the pedestal down to the engine here. So I had to replace that. And I had, I replaced, uh, I did not replace this line because it was still good, this coolant line, but this coolant line died on me. So change that. I still need to get an air or a, uh, not an air, a, uh, uh, a clamp for this is the intake line way over there 
Uh, it's not really that big of a deal because it's pulling anyway, so it's really not going to pull anything from outside, but it'd probably be a good idea. This thing's been really good. Um, I don't lose, now that my valve cover gasket is good, I don't lose any more oil. Um, and this has just been a dream. So um, one of the other things I had to do, so the low air pressure switch, this one right here was the leftover one. Um, I use this as a plug because this fitting actually has a larger uh, thread pitch than the normal low pressure switch. So this low pressure switch was off of the governor that came on this TF550. So I just use this because it goes right into the governor. Works great. Um, and then I used a push to connect fitting for my air dryer purge line and that works amazing. So um, yeah. So, this thing is completely empty right now. Um, so, we'll go ahead and crank it up. Do a cold start and you can kind of see. So, we're right there at five, 500 RPMs, a little bit more than that. We'll go ahead and crank her up. High idle it. And you'll see here in a second the gauges will start rising and it's... Yeah, there we go. It was never this fast with the old compressor. Never, ever, ever. So, yep. So, that's our new air brake compressor. And, uh, yeah. Not common to see a TF550 on a, on a DT, but there you go. So, anyway, thanks for watching, y'all.